Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today we have kind of an interesting one um, in that we have an unusual interval of integration um, and kind of an also an unusual integrand. Uh, we will be solving this with, uh, with Feynman integration. Um, and normally uh, for these type, for anyway, videos on my channel, we usually have like indefinite integrals going from zero to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. We often have like zero to one or maybe negative one to one or, you know, zero to pi over two or negative pi over two to pi over two, zero to pi, zero to two pi. Um, I believe this is the only integral I've uh, featured that has the interval of integration um, zero to pi over three. All right, so this is somewhat new. Um, let's just get get started. And this is kind of a, um, a complicated one, um, so it's going to be a longer video. But let's go ahead and just get started. All right, so our first step, we're going to make the substitution that y is equal to tangent x. And let's see if we can figure out the, uh, the motivation for doing that. Well, we have a... Um, a square root of 3 minus tangent squared x. Um, you know, that, except for that 3, um, we, you know, we might be able to, to do something there. If that was just a, like a u or something like that, uh, we might be able to do, or, or a y in our case, we might be able to do something with that. So we're going to make that substitution. And then our x becomes arctangent y. And then our dx becomes dy over 1 over uh, y squared. And our limits of integration change from 0 to pi over 3 to 0 to square root of 3. All right, now let's break out the, uh, the double angle for sine. Um, we know that, uh, you know, basically um, sine of 2 theta can be expressed this way, so we will be using that but we don't have sine, we have sine of 2x, that's actually, with our substitution, that's sine of 2 arctangent y. And, and plugging that into, into this, we just get that sine 2x uh, in our substitution is going to be 2y over 1 plus y squared. All right, and then taking care of that square root term, that just transforms to square root of 3 minus y squared. So plugging that all back in and... Um, we end up with this at, at the end. We have that our integral that we started with is just one half times the integral from zero to square root of three of arctangent y over y times the square root of three minus y squared. All right, so it's a little bit better, but now um, we don't have a really good uh, interval of integration here, so let's just go ahead and scale that. Um, Basically, we're, we're, we're trying to map 0 to square root of 3 to 0 to 1, because that's what I'd like my bounds of integration to be. They're nicer to work with. There might be a, um, a, a better way, but I just, I go step by step. I know that I don't like this interval of integration, so I'm going to try to get it to 0 to 1. And we do that like this. We just let y equal square root of 3x, and then x is y over square root of 3, our dy becomes uh, square root of 3 dx, and um, our bounds of integration go from 0 to pi over 3, from 0 to pi over 3 to 0 to 1. So now we're just left with this, and you can see this kind of accomplished two things. We got our bounds of integration going from 0 to 1, and you can see now, um, we can bring out this, this 3 as a square root of 3. Um, so we'll have the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that, that's always nice to have. So this is, this, is what our, um, this is what our integral transforms into now. So it's, it's looking even better now. Except um, without Feynman integration, going from here, uh, proceeding from here would be would be difficult. So now comes the time for Feynman integration. And if you've watched my videos before, you probably know that I'm going to reparameterize this by replacing this square root of three in front of the x with a with a parameter. And that's that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, we're going to generalize our integral uh, to make it a function of t that's equal to this. 
And then we'll notice that um, i is simply, our original integral is simply f evaluated at the square root of 3. And if we evaluate our f at 0, we get 0. So basically, this is what we're stating. f at square root of 3 is i, and f at 0 is 0. Uh, and now we'll use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign to take the derivative with respect to t of our reparameterized integral. All right, and this is the process right here. Um, we just bring the differentiation right inside the integration. Uh, and then we compute the partial with respect to t of arctangent tx, since um, we're not going to even have to worry about this denominator. It doesn't depend on t. And what we end up with is this. This is the partial with respect to t of arctangent tx, plugging that back in, and we end up with this. And then we're going to do some simplification. Um, well, that, that's pretty much it. I really didn't need to write this part. This is just f, this is our f prime of t. Um, Okay, so now we need to actually evaluate this integral, and this is probably the hardest part. You can, I mean, there might be a formula that you can apply to this, um, but we're just going to take the long route, and we're going to let x equal sine theta. And the motivation for that, as you can see, is we'll end up with a 1 minus sine squared theta, which is cosine squared theta. But then we get to take the square root of that. That's just going to be cosine theta. And also, our dx is cosine theta. They're going to cancel out. All right. So our limits of integration go from 0 to 1 to 0 to pi over 2. And 0 to pi over 2 is, is very often a nice interval to have, especially when you're talking about trig functions, which, which we are now going to have due to our substitution. All right, so plugging that all in, and we end up with this. Okay, so now we have um, an integral going from 0 to pi over 2 of a trig function, which is, which is nice. Okay, now this is definitely something you can use a formula on. We're not going to use the formula. We're going to be solving it the hard way. Um, so we need to evaluate this, and then obviously we multiply it by 1 over 2 square root of 3 but we're just going to worry about this for now. So we're going to let z equal tangent theta. That might seem like an odd choice, but it works out. If we let z equal tangent theta, obviously theta is arctangent of z just by taking the uh, inverse tangent on both sides. And then d theta becomes, uh, well, dz over 1 plus z squared, or just 1 over 1 plus z squared dz. So now we need to express sine theta in terms of x. Now you can do that a couple different ways. I like to build a triangle based on the relationship that z is equal to tangent theta. And from there, if you build that triangle, you can easily see that sine theta is going to be equal to z over the square root of 1 plus z squared. All right, so we plug that all in. Here's our, um, here's our d theta. And this is our this is our sine theta sine squared theta term. All right, so uh, this this is pretty much this is what we have right here, um, and you'll notice that this and this will cancel, um, and we distribute this one plus z squared right here. Well, actually, that's not what we end up doing. Uh, we just simplify the denominator. We're going to simplify this denominator of this fraction right here. Um, all we do is create a common denominator, and we will we will find that um, 1 plus t squared z squared over 1 plus z squared is equal to this. Again, just create a common denominator, and it uh, it works out pretty nicely like this. And that's gonna that's gonna um, evaluate to this we can transform it into this just by factoring out a z squared all right so don't forget this part was actually our denominator so we flip it plug it back in and you'll notice that this one over uh one plus z squared will cancel this one over one plus z squared so now we just have this um, and again, we could break out a formula. This is an arctangent form of an integral, but we're not going to do it. 
we're going to actually do the substitutions. We're going to let uh, u equal z times the square root of 1 plus t squared. Easy to see uh, why we would make that substitution. That's going to give us a 1 over u squared. All right, so if we have u is equal to z over square root of 1 plus t squared, we have z is equal to u over square root of 1 plus t squared. Therefore, our dz is du over square root of 1 plus t squared. All right, we'll pu put that back into the integral, um, and this is what we get. And now this is clearly pi over 2. I'm not going to show that. I think I've done enough already. Um, so... Um, so now we just have this, but don't forget, this was just a uh, part of it. We actually need to multiply it by one over two square root of three. Um, so this is our F prime of T. So, um, all we need to do now is integrate our, uh, derived expression for F prime of T to find F of T. All right. Well, we know that f of t is equal to the antiderivative of f prime of t, and that's equal to the antiderivative of this. So we'll make the substitution that t is equal to tangent u. We get u is equal to arc tangent t, and dt is secant squared u du. So we end up with this. Plugging in all our substitutions, we, we get this. And the square root of 1 plus tangent squared u um, is just going to be secant u, and that will cancel one of our secant u's here. Um, so all we're left with is the integral of secant u du, which of course is the natural log of secant u plus tangent u plus c. But don't forget, um, we need to go back to the t world, right? We just solved this integral in terms of u, but t is tangent u. Um, and we can we can solve for secant u again. We could we could build a triangle and figure out what secant u is, or we can use this identity right here. Again, one plus tangent squared u is just secant u, so the square root of it is secant u. But tangent u is t, so our secant u is actually square root of one plus t squared. All right, so now we have it, and obviously this this part right here is just t. That that's the the, the direct substitution. So integral of secant u du is the natural log of the square root of 1 plus t squared plus t plus c. All right, so we have our f of t, but we have this inconvenient constant of integration, which we can, uh, we can determine by using the condition that f of 0 is equal to 0, and we can easily find that c is equal to 0, and there, there's the work showing that right there. Um, so there's our f of t. Now all we do is plug in square root of 3. Um, well, actually, first we're going to rationalize this, uh, this expression right here. We're going to, by multiplying the top and the bottom by square root of 3 to get square root of 3 pi over 12. Um, so uh, this is our f of t. And then we evaluate it at t is equal to square root of 3, because remember, way back at the beginning, we determined that our original integral is equal to f of t evaluated at t is equal to square root of 3. All right, there we are, plugging in square root of 3 into our f of t. Um, we'll notice that this term right here just becomes a 2. So this is it. This is what we have. That, that integral way back at the beginning is simply equal to, well, not simply, that's kind of a messy expression, but at least it's in terms of elementary functions. Um, this integral evaluates the square root of 3 pi over 12 times the natural log of 2 plus the square root of 3. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.